Hello, how's it going? Um, thought we changed the scenery for the uh, devotional. Uh, good morning. And we just got out of Sharon's uh, doctor appointment. Yeah. You want to tell him hi? Hi, everybody. Um, we came to our favorite spot, one of our favorite spots. Yes. And I'm about to show you before we start the devotional. Uh, maybe you'll see and understand why it's one of our favorite spots. It's a very, very quiet spot in one of the most busiest places. So let me uh, yeah, give them a tour. Us. Just follow me. <laughs> you see from the distance, it's the Golden Gate Bridge, which is a really high bridge. And we're probably about the height of the peak. Little tiny lighthouse over there. Where is it at? Oh, the lake, the bottom. Yeah. Hi, I'm back. So, there's only one passage or passages that comes to mind <clears throat> today. I wanna, I wanna talk about the bigness of God. Well, tell them where we're at, really. I'm not sure what it's exactly it's called. We're right across the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco, but it's not in San Francisco. It's right outside the Golden Gate. There's, um, I'm not sure if you can see back there. Uh, there's some kids up there. That's where they used to do military stuff here, right? Yeah, back in, after Pearl Harbor, the uh, United States worried that if they attacked uh, Pearl Harbor that maybe they could reach San Francisco so right here in these mountains which faces the ocean most of these mountains are hollowed out and they're actually buildings inside military compounds right yeah, yeah. Um, so right here where we're at can't see it but there was three huge guns that were facing the ocean that would uh and then they had these the Nike missile site which had nuclear bombs that if planes ever came and if they got within 50 miles they would they had these nuclear bombs that would blow up in the air and destroy anything within a certain amount of radius miles and miles of radius so uh, it's all abandoned now supposedly <laughs> um, all of this was military base back in the day uh, it no longer is, but the remnants are still here. The guns are are gone, but I'm not sure if you can see up there, but that's one of the, uh, let's see, if you can see a square, that's like a lookout. There's three of them. <clears throat> so it's an interesting spot with a lot of history. Yeah, it's so beautiful. If you ever come here to San Francisco, it's definitely a... Uh definitely a beautiful sight to see just to come see the history yeah san francisco is an all city a lot of people the city is literally 10 minutes away which is insane because it's so so peaceful out here yeah. so. we like to come out here there's actually just up in this little area there's just one bench up here and it's so serene and it's so peaceful and there's you know, you just get to see how awesome God's glory is and just to see the beautiful things that he's created and just get to hear the waves. And even though it's so close to so much foot traffic and so much city and traffic and cars, just cars and just everything to to just think that it's just at a, at a reach away that this is here. And we can actually see all that from here. And just to be here and just to be able to watch it from a distance, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it feels like 
feels so beautiful just to sit here in this in this bench and and just to be able to experience it it feels really good to get, get over here and just to be able to you know decompose yourself and just reflect to, and reflect on so many things yeah. after the video after we're done talking i'm going to show you what it looks like down because we're basically on a on a cliff yeah and um not a direct cliff but i mean it, it I'll show you what it looks like down below, but <clears throat> I wanted to, I wanted to do the, uh, I forget what it's called. Devotion. Devotion. Honey. Aye, aye, aye. So I'm like, if I'm here, we're in San Francisco. A lot of people have never been. It's one of the most known cities in the world. So why not do our devotion here? But there's one passage of scripture that comes to mind when I see the vastness and it makes me think about the bigness of God and um, I, I pray that this is going to encourage you because it encourages me um, I have my Bible and I'm actually going to the Old Testament this time to the book of Job and the book of Job is interesting I don't really this would be a really long video if I do the whole story of Job. But basically, um, calamity fell upon him. His friends tried to console him and give him wrong wisdom, wrong, wrong advice. They tell Job, maybe you sinned. Maybe God's mad at you. Maybe this or maybe that. And finally, Job has a conversation with God. Okay, and, and when I come to places like this... This is what it makes me think of. I'm going to read out of Job chapter 38. It says, I'm, I'm going to skip a few verses, okay, guys? So I'm going to skip between 1 and one and 11. I'm not going to read all 11. Maybe I will. I don't know. Let's see what happens. It says, The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? So he's talking about his friends. Who is it that's talking to you? Who is it that's giving you this advice? And he goes, now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. So this is God. Like he's coming to Job saying this. And he asks him this question. He says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. And, and it goes down to some of the verses. He goes, and who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, when I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said, this is the part that gets me right here when I see the ocean like this. He says, when I said, this far you may come, but no further, and here your proud waves must stop. And it's like, if you've ever been to the ocean and you see them waves pounding and God is basically saying that he's the one that tells those powerful waves when to stop. Mm. And I'm like, man. When to stop, when to part, when to, you know. Yeah. And, and I don't know why that verse is always, you know, <clears throat> when I think of the bigness of God, it, it, I think fear is a wrong word, but it is fearful in a sense, like not like a monster fear, but like it's so massive. Like, like we were below earlier. We saw these waves crashing and it's scary. Yeah. Like it looks beautiful in pictures, but when you see those waves come crashing, you're like that raw power. They're majestic and everything, yeah. but the power. Behind and God them. is saying, who tells those proud waves to stop and they stop, you know, and, and it made me, <laughs> God is so big. When I see this ocean and these mountains, how can you not say there's a God? You know, I mean, I find comfort in knowing that these things that are massive are things that are controlled by the mouth of God. Like he created 
things into existence. He created this earth and these mountains and these oceans and the planets and the universes. And the Bible says that not even the universe can contain God. And I'm like, that's that's huge. And and then I think like, you know, there's a story in the Bible where it says this huge fish swallowed Jonah. Because Jonah didn't want to do what he was supposed to do. And the fish swallowed him and took him back in the direction he was supposed to go. And I thought, how did God communicate to tell that giant fish to go do it, to swallow Jonah, but don't eat him, like swallow him? And then I thought, man, God speaks fish. God speaks shark. God speaks butterfly. God speaks ant every language he's not limited to humanity matter of fact the Bible, if we could read job it says that um he says he goes job have you told lightning to come and it says here i am <laughs> but yet god does he speaks to lightning and it obeys he speaks to oceans and it obeys he speaks to animals and, and they obey you know you might think i'm crazy but when i hear birds chirping I truly believe that they're worshiping God because everything was created to worship God. The only thing that that rebels against worshiping God are humans. I think animals are worshiping God. They're worshiping God yeah. When cows moo, when horses neigh, they're, because they're, there's no sin in them. And God gave them that language to communicate, you know, and, and and he's just so big and so massive and I see this ocean and I'm just like this is insane like if I dropped in the middle of that no one would ever find me like it's impossible like there's boats passing that look small I mean I'm gonna show you there's this huge ship huge barge huge if we stood by that thing we wouldn't but, even be able to see us but look how small it looks. And it's only coming out of the bay. It's not even in the ocean yet. And you think, like, that's a huge God. Now, why do I find comfort in that? Because this huge God that created the planets and the universe, the moons and the stars in heaven, the Bible says that he, he spit out the stars. Mm. <laughs> these mountains and everything that this God that 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 little old me if I dropped in the middle of that ocean no one would ever find me but there's one that could find me him that in the mass in, in the midst of all this bigness he loves us he would find the needle in the haystack he cares about us yeah and that that's incredible to me in, in the billions of people on this earth and and he loved you so much and he knew your heart was seeking out for God and you're watching this video now why because you were that person that's been dropped in the ocean maybe you felt like that maybe your life you feel like you're just a nothing floating in a giant ocean and I'm here to tell you that the one that created the ocean knows everything that's in it Matter of fact, Jesus says, even when a bird falls from its nest, I know. <laughs> God. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy that when, when even when you don't know Jesus, that even even then we're still crying out for, for something that we don't even know. Because when I was a little girl, I remember that I, I didn't even know Christ, but yet then I was crying out for, I was crying out for him. And I still didn't know him. But yet then I was crying out for him. And and look, make sure to and, and, and look at and look at now, you know, it's like I was crying out for God. And and, and I'd cry out and I'd be like, you know, you know, Jesus, you know, and, and and cry out for a God that I still didn't even know, not even realizing that one day I'd be serving him. You know? Yeah. Isn't that amazing that, you know, not even realizing that I'd be, I'd be serving him. 
you know, there's um, there's so many th so many things, so many different ways we can go with this video. Um, God is just an incredible God, and no matter what, I, I like to think that there's people that like to go to um, wrecking yards to find old cars. You know, some people don't understand that. Some people don't understand the beauty of the classic car. And they're like, why, why are you, get a new car, get a new car. Um, I believe if Jesus was alive today, that would be him because that's what he does. He goes to the wrecking yard of life and he finds the most wrecked thing. You know, when you get in a little, uh, little uh, fender bender, real quick insurance wants to say it's total. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in the same way, if something happens, we go through some trauma, something happens. Your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your family, they look at you and they're like, yeah, they're totaled. And they pretty much dump you into a wrecking yard. And you just sit in the wrecking yard and you rust until you die. But Jesus says, I love the wrecking yards. I want to find the totaled ones. I want to find the damaged ones. I want to find the ones with the most rust. I want to find the one that everybody says there's no way to restore that one. I always say this, I said, many of us have shattered our lives into a million thousand little tiny pieces that when the sun shines, it just looks like little sparkles on the ground. And the Lord looks at it and says, yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to put that thing together. Mm -hmm. And he can take those little fragments of pieces and some way, somehow, he does it. He creates something new with it. Yeah. Something better. Yeah. And, and in life, guys, restoring your shattered life doesn't mean that it's going to look polished. There might be cracks in it. But let me tell you something. Those cracks are your testimony. Yeah, they are. Those cracks are what you're going to show others. Because if, if God would restore you completely with no cracks, how could you go, go to a cracked person and say, hey, Jesus can do it? But if you show up with shattered pieces put together and you say, look what he did for me, man. Without opposition in life, you can never build character. And, you know, you you have to build character to become the person Might be talking to you. that you are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I keep telling her to talk louder because... It's a little bit of breeze out here, and I don't know how it is hitting the speaker or the mic on the, on the phone, but... I'll talk louder. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to have a great video, and then they can't hear you. Okay. I'll talk louder. Yeah. But um, for me, when I see things like this, it amazes me because I, I find comfort that if he can create something like this... It, 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 the Bible says that it took him six days to create everything and the bible says that he saw his creation and said it was good i mean if you've ever been to landmarks or places like you know so many places around the world places i've never been to um massive places deserts and forests and oceans and beaches and and i'm like if he did this in seven days and i've been serving him for years what can he do in our life when you look at the world and what he did in seven days, what can he do in your life in seven years, in one year, in six months? Oh, man. God is big. And because he's, he's big, nothing can harm him. He's our protector. He's the one we run to. He's the one that covers us. He's the one that, that, that um, guards us. Because the Bible says to to be in Christ. And if I'm hidden in Christ, how can the enemy attack you? He can't. He can't. No, he can't. So. He can't under any circumstance. Um, yeah, so the bigness of God. It's okay to fear God in the sense that we are re uh, like rev reverent. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. But he's a big God and he's a loving God that he can create huge things like this, yet still 
at the whisper of his name. You know what sticks to me a lot? It sticks to me a lot when you've always told me about God being so meek. Yeah. When you tell me all the time that he can be so gentle yet can crush. Yeah. You know? Well, there's a difference between weakness and meekness. Yeah. And I love when you when yeah. you explain that, you know. Yeah. Um, Jesus, I mean, even when he was taken to the cross, he wasn't taken to the cross because he was weak. He was taken to the cross because he was meek. Meek is strength restrained. He could have completely destroyed the world. But he chose not to because he knew the only way to save us would be him going to the cross. So he chose to be meek because he was never weak. Matter of fact, he told Pilate, because Pilate goes, don't you know I have the authority to take your life? He goes, you have no authority to take my life. Mm. He goes, I take my life. He goes, I give my life and I take it back. You know, and um, that's, a, that's... That's powerful. Yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, that's powerful. So we're going to end the video. I'm going to show you what it looks down below. And um, have a great, blessed day. I hope this spoke to you. I hope it encouraged you. And, uh, you know, if you need to go out to nature sometimes and just talk with God. Yes, get out there. So I'm going to show them. Yes. Looks like black sand down there. <laughs> yeah. So beautiful. Careful. Yeah, I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to go just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that little boat. Where? Right oh, there. A little tugboat. <laughs> it's not a tugboat. It's not. No, what is it's it? a little fishing boat. Oh. Okay. Or just a little boat. All right. Say bye. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye.